Hey everyone, Teo here. Today I'm reviewing an app called Tablet Studio Pro, which is made for Windows tablets. This is an utility app that can add customizable soft keys by the side of your tablet so that you can use them as shortcuts for your drawing apps. This app is actually quite useful and can speed up your digital art workflow. There's also a radio manual where you can get additional shortcuts. Let me tell you the disclaimer before we start the review. This app was provided to me for free for testing purposes and the version is 5.1. And there are several glitches which are not resolved or fixed yet. But I've decided to just go ahead and make this review because I have no idea when those glitches will be Fixed. This app is available from the Microsoft App Store and these are the three plans available. You can buy this app as a one-time purchase for US $99 but right now they have a launch promotion going on and it's 60% off so right now you can get this at $39.99. Otherwise you can go for the subscription model which is either $4.99 per month or $29.99 per year. The alternatives to this app would probably be the shortcut remotes which are around the same price. The differences are this app can give you more customizable soft keys and this is a physical product that you have to bring around whereas the app is inside your tablet. So now I want to show you a quick demo on how you can improve your digital art workflow using this app. And the drawing app that I'm using is Concepts and I have already customized all the soft keys here with shortcuts from the app. The soft keys can be renamed and if you want to, you can use icons as well. So here I have A6 for the color wheel and A7 for the layers palette. I have eight brushes here from B1 to B8. So when I press the soft keys, the appropriate tool will be selected. Let me add some texture to the pot. So I've just selected brush number one to add some texture here. And I want to erase some of the lines behind the plants. So to do that, I need to select the leaves first. And let me go into selection mode by pressing brush seven. Select all this, press the lock shortcut there. And now go into the eraser shortcut, which is brush number eight, and just erase the lines behind. And now I need to unlock the leaves because I need to delete some of the leaves as well. So let me just select all, unlock here, and once again go into the selection mode, which is brush number seven. I want to select this leaf that I want to lock and now it's locked and this sleeve that I want to lock and now it's locked. Let's go into the eraser tool again and erase the leaves in the back. By the way, you can use the soft keys or the tools or the menus on the drawing app as well. The difference between using Tablet Pro Studio versus the tools that are already provided is some of the shortcuts for apps such as Photoshop, Clip Studio, and other apps are actually hidden behind manuals, so you have to click a few times to find those shortcuts. So with Tablet Pro Studio, you can actually customize those shortcuts and expose them here, which can let you access those shortcuts more easily with just one tap. And now I'm on the correct layer, so let's select brush number three. Oops, I tapped one extra time. So let me just color this really quickly. And let me switch to brush number four for the shadows. Okay, and brush number five for the pot. And brush number six for the shadows. So with this app, I can actually select the colors very quickly and this allows me to work much faster. If I need another potted plant by the side, I can select all and duplicate and move this to the side here. So now I have two potted plants. Obviously you can use your keyboard shortcut, Control A, Control D to select all and duplicate, but you have to bring this around. So if you have this app by the side, you don't need any extra physical devices um, 
in order to use those shortcuts. So that's actually the selling point of this app. This app has so many features and settings, it will really take some time to learn what this app is capable of. And these are the shortcuts, the keyboard shortcuts that are available. So if you want to call up the driver using your keyboard shortcuts, you can do so if you have a keyboard around. If you are left-handed, you can choose to have the panel go to the right side. To do that, just tap on the apps icon, tap on touch settings and choose to have it positioned on the right side and tap apply. So this is just one place where you can adjust some of the settings. The other place to adjust the settings would be to tap on the app itself to open up the driver. And now let's take a look at the customization available. So this is the driver and there are many settings that you can change. And the learning curve for this driver is actually quite high. There are some video tutorials already created by the developers, but you would definitely need to spend some time to go through those tutorials in order to understand what this driver is capable of. So here we have this big button which allows you to turn on or off the side panel. You can also use a keyboard shortcut to turn this on or off. And here at the bottom is this auto switch which currently has some glitches. Auto switch should load the appropriate shortcuts for the active app. So for example, right now I'm using concepts and the shortcuts for concepts are loaded here. If I switch over to MIDI bank, by right the shortcuts here should reload for MIDI bank, but it's not happening here. And if I use Chrome, the shortcuts should reload for Chrome. And if I don't want the shortcuts to load for Chrome, for example, there's no way for me to do that. So these are the glitches and limitations currently. Now sometimes the auto switch does work, but right now it doesn't. And since this does not work now, if you want to load the shortcuts for the app you want to use, you have to go into this menu here and double click to load those shortcuts manually. Right now when you enable or disable the side panel, this setting will apply to all the apps that are listed here. So one feature that I wish this app can have is the ability to launch the side panel for specific apps. For example, if I just want to launch the side panel for Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator, I can put a little check marks beside those two apps. And when I launch other apps such as Chrome or Microsoft Edge, the side panel will not launch for those apps, but will only launch for Photoshop and Adobe Illustrator or any other app that I choose specifically. To customize the soft keys, you can tap edit panel and this will appear. So you can tap pick button. So now you can tap on any soft key you want and customize it on the right side. So if I want to customize this button, I can just input the keyboard shortcut here. So you can choose the keys here from this drop down menu and add the appropriate modifier. You can also have the keys be sticky, which means the shortcuts will run repeatedly until you lift your finger. So I just have it by default, do not hold. And these are the shortcuts for the radio menu, which I can activate by the side of this button. So this is the radio menu. I must say that I have not gone into customizing this yet because I find the customization to be a bit too advanced for me. Customizing the soft keys is straightforward enough. So let's go back. Now you can change how big or how many keys there are in this panel. You can choose between the slim, which will give you just one column, or the small, two columns, the medium, which I'm using, which is three columns. You can also have large, which are the big buttons. Now there are some presets here that you can choose from. I think medium is good because this does not take up much space and this gives me a lot of buttons. Customization is also available for the pen and you can use the radio menu with the pen or choose to disable it if you don't want to use it. Now you can customize the pen depending on the pen you are using and to switch between the pens uh, you can click the or tap the up and down arrow. So this looks like the Wacom bamboo pen with two side buttons 
and the two side buttons are customizable here. So if you use the Surface Pen 2, there is one side button, so you can only customize that single button here. And this looks like the Renaissance or Renaissance Pen with one side button. These are the shortcuts you can customize to the pen's side button. So if you want to use the radio manual, you can choose the radio manual. Because Windows is also using the side button, there may be some conflicts when you are customizing the side buttons, especially if you are just using a pen with one single button. So I'm using this Huion pen with two buttons. So this button closer to the pen tip is the normal right click and this button is the radio manual shortcut. So I don't have conflict with this two button pen. But if you are just using a pen with one button, there may be conflicts and you may have to go into Windows settings to change some settings for the pen. All right, to conclude, I find this app very useful. The main functionality works fine, the soft keys work fine, and I was able to customize my keyboard shortcuts into the soft keys without any issues. So this app should be useful for those who draw on Windows tablet and want access to shortcuts but don't want to use a physical keyboard. As of version 5.1, this app still has some glitches such as the app switching issue that I mentioned earlier. So hopefully the developers can fix those glitches to improve the user experience. And the last thing is I do find a customization for the radio menu to be quite challenging or maybe that's just me anyway the customization for the soft keys is quite straightforward all right if you guys are interested to get this app you can check out the link in the video description below